Hey guys, it's Twitter Maxwell here and welcome to another episode of my WWE series on TW. It's that time of the year again where superstars from both Raw and SmackDown come together for the big tournament. We've made it 16 competitors this time, 16 of the top superstars and they compete in a knockout stage to see who effectively is the best wrestler with the winner getting a future title shot like with them for the rest of the tournaments of their choice. So I've really went stacked in this tournament. Um, as I say, a lot of feuds matches between two rivals happen and then they advance and, and stuff so it's a really good show it does take 28 segments because of the amount of matches totaling 400 minutes so i appreciate if that was in real life we'd be sick in the back teeth it but because it's a long show we'll just jump, jump straight into it and yeah i hope you guys enjoy it and as i say roman reigns is defending champion can he make it two in a row let's find out here is the wwe world grand prix 2020 so we start off with some of the competitors in this particular tournament. We've got Roman Reigns, we've got Kofi Kingston, of course, two rivals there. Bo Dallas, Fergal Devitt, Velveteen Dream, Baron Corbin, Samoa Joe and Dean Ambrose. So these are eight guys, eight of the 16 that will be taking part in the tournament. So it's just really a hype video to start the show. We just made them do a promo so effectively it gets the storylines gaining a bit of heat. So A-Star 100, great start to the show. A lot of positives there, Bo Dallas getting better at his gimmick which is good to see a lot of storylines gaining heat and a couple of guys coming across as a star coming across well of a team dream hinting at a heel turn so we can see what it's offering us to turn so look and um, cool so we start off with two rivals and it is of course the guys shooting over the world heavyweight championship and this exceptional matchup in the first round that sees Roman Reigns defeat Kofi Kingston in 1822 by pinfall. Uh, A90 to start the show, so pretty good match. Uh, lack of psychology, so that's going to be interesting when these two eventually do come ahead at one point. But um, the match got the crowd hotter, a 94 performance for Reigns, a 90 for Kofi. Now what's interesting is if this had the psychology aspect to it, I'd be really intrigued to see how high this could have possibly gotten. But Roman Reigns will progress into the second round. Next up, we're about to have superb wrestling and great heat. We saw Fergo Devitt defeat Rusev in 1447 with a brain buster, a B82. Devitt's obviously going to have the better performance here, and this is going to be capped uh, because of the lack of associated storyline and, of course, because the match was only 14 minutes. But good win for Devitt. He'll go into the second round. Rusev, it's not Rusev day to day, I'm afraid. Next up, promo from Jason Jordan, as he's going to take on Daniel Bryan, of course, every little feud because of an upset victory. So A92, as JJ hypes up his credentials for potentially winning this tournament. And the two of them done battle. The bout had superb wrestling, great heat, and Jason Jordan scores the pinfall over Daniel Bryan in 1731. A star 96. Both guys are extremely over. I have, must have mentioned which uh, I did earlier. We are in Wembley Stadium. Even though it is 90,000, I thought, can we try and sell it as much as possible? So we did miss it by about 30,000. But still 57,696 in attendance. And Jason Jordan's over in the UK. So a, a fantastic match up there. And you know, these tournaments can make mega stars. Could this potentially have made a mega star of Jason Jordan? Next up, uh, but that has superb wrestling and great heat. We had the Velveteen Dream defeat Dean Ambrose in 15-17 with a fast roll-up. B81, both guys with good performances, but again, because of the no storyline, it's the Velveteen Dream who progresses, and uh, that will be the reason why that match only gets that. I could, I suppose, have added the eight guys into a storyline, but and then just done a tournament that way, but I just felt like, you know, we'd get a couple of feuds going together. You know, some not every match in a tournament's going to be a five-star match, so I'm happy with that. Next up, Renee Young interviews the manager of Andre Cien Almas. It is of course Selena Vega. It's actually Renee's debut after about four years in the company, but C65 because obviously Selena's not really over, Renee's not over. But Almas will look a million bucks. So just a little showcase there for, of course, the tandem that is Vega and Almas. This leads into the match between Randy Orton and Almas, who had a little feud on Raw. 
And in this first round match, it was a great wrestling match with good heat. And it was Andre Cien Almas defeating Randy Orton in 21.57 by pinfall with a split-legged corkscrew sent on following an interference from Zelina Vega. E plus 89, very happy with that. Just short of the, the A grade. Orton with an 86, Almas with an 85. Orton's playing his role spectacularly. As I say, we try and get Almas into that proper main event scene going forward. Next up in the first round, the superb match saw Samoa Joe defeat Chad Gable by a Kikuna clutch in 14-18. Gable win 83, Joe win 91. As I say, it was just a match to give Joe a good win over a guy who's got momentum for the Cruiserweight tournament in Chad Gable. But, as I say, that'll be Chad's limitations for just now. Joe progresses to round two. And next up in round two, it was an exceptional matchup that saw Bo Dallas defeat Baron Corbin in 15.05 with a spear. This one was just a B78. Interestingly though, that Baron Corbin can be off his game and still score at a 95 performance. This didn't have psychology or a storyline, so it's obviously going to be hampered greatly. But Bo progresses to the next round, Baron Corbin. So his end of days. And also in the first round, it was about the hard superb wrestling and great heat. The Miz defeated Alistair Black in 1757 with a skull crushing finale. B plus 84, again two good performances, but the match lacks psychology, so we do need to try and get workers working together to improve the psychology start or at least pass some of their knowledge on. But overall, it's still a good matchup for the first round that just shows the talent we've got. Um, as I say, it's still going to pass as a co-main event in some shows. So that's our first round done. And we move on to a promo with the musical tandem that is Aiden English and Elias. So they cut a promo insulting the Wim- Wembley Clare crowd even to a B plus 87. And they're in tight team action against the Offers of Pain. Elias and Aiden pick up the win in 914 when Aiden pings Rizar with the director's cut. Rizar the weak link, I kind of gave up on him because he's going to do mixed martial arts. But the B minus 77 is good. Uh, Elias and Aiden, both were good performances. Elias in 82, considering the fact he was off his game. So, yeah, delighted with that. And it's a storyteller match, so pleased overall with that. So, into the second round we go. And it's uh, about the had superb wrestling and great heat. Roman Reigns defeats the Velveteen Dream in 1345 by pinfall. Great performance by both. Velveteen hints his heel turn again, though obviously that'll be explained as episodes go along. But the BA2, and again that'll be because of the lack of psychology. No, actually just because it was capped so short, and of course because it's two baby faces, which you're going to get in these kind of tournaments. But regardless, it's the second round. It's a good match. That can only get better with a storyline behind it. And after the match, Roman Reigns and Velveteen Dream oh, that's static there. Roman Reigns and Velveteen Dream have a heated confrontation and they eventually come to blows. The security swarms the ring to break them up. So A star one hundred. Dream's still hunting his heel turn. He's not going to turn heel just now, but it's a bit of tension between Roman Reigns and the Velveteen Dream. So A star one hundred so we won't trigger that heel turn yet. Next up in round one, uh, round two, sorry, about the had superb wrestling and great heat. Andrea Cien Almas defeats Samoa Joe in 1429 by pinfall, a surprise roll up to progress in around semi finals. 81, 88 for Almas and 91 for Samoa Joe. And yeah, just a, a very, very good match there. Two heels again, so that's obviously going to affect it and the short match, but yeah, good progression for Cien Almas or the former La Sombra. Miss cuts a promo. On his match with Bo Dallas, so that gets an A90. And that was a good performance from Miz. And their match, again, suffers from psychology, which is going to be a worry. We go all in in the Bo Dallas title run. But still an exceptional match. Bo Dallas picks up the win in 14-29 with the Spear. Both guys were 94 performance, so I'm hoping that gives both of them good, um, yeah, good overness going forward. Overall. Still happy, lack of psychology, short match, understandable. And uh, next up, and about they had sensational wrestling and fantastic heat. Gago Devitt J- uh, defeats Jason Jordan in 1346 by pinfall, illegally using the ropes for leverage. B 
82. What's incredible here is both guys have great chemistry and both guys are a 100 match. So these two will have a feud in the future, that's for sure. Um, I think it's obviously the case of the short match that's hampered that. I think a storyline, 30 minute match, that probably nails a 100 mark easy. So really good showing from Jason Jordan and Devitt progresses. Promo from Bo Dallas as he hypes up, you know, his feud with Fergal Devitt. Bo Dallas came across as a star and it was at A92 as these two will meet in the semi-final. And their semi-final match was exceptional and it was Devitt picking up the win over Bo in 24-21 by illegally using the ropes for leverage. So amazing that they get an A star 99. Uh, both guys were 94 performance. But uh, it just shows the build up of Bo Dallas and you know the level we've got Devitt to. So delighted with that and Devitt will be in the main event. Can he possibly secure that title match? Cuts a promo just obviously saying you know he's gonna go ahead and win this, which he got an A91. And the other matchup in the semi-finals we're about to have superb wrestling and great heat. Roman Reigns defeats Andrea C and Almas in 2002 by pinfall. Uh, during the match, also with Kofi accidentally hit Andrade when he went to hit Roman. But A90 is good. Uh, continues the storyline between Kofi and Roman. 94 for Roman, 90 for Andrea Almas. Continues the storyline as I say, and it could lead to an incredible matchup between Roman Reigns and Fergal Devitt. Can Roman defend and be the first two-time winner of the world? Grand Prix. So that was an A90 for Co-Main. Uh, sorry, not a Co-Main. Uh, Semi-Fan, I'm forgetting I had a match in with the Usos. So they've got a promo on this long-standing feud with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. It's just been superb. So they're obviously going to get action because they're not in the actual tournament. And I get a B89, just the usual spiel. And the Uso penitentiary. And Co-Main, as I say, just bringing in some guys that didn't get in the tournament that are feuding. Uh, plus obviously a couple of our top ladies. Uh, and about the had superb wrestling and great heat, it was Seth Rollins, Paige, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn, who defeated Zack Sabre Jr., Dana Brooke, and the Usos in 1924, when Seth Rollins defeats Zack Sabre Jr., a Felix Splash, in 91, spectacular, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, lowest ratings, and it says a lot, when Paige is getting 86, with a stale gimmick, so she can only improve. Dana Brooke, hanging with the best of them in 92 there, but fantastic. Continues three storylines, including our, our women's storyline that's on the, the women's revolution. Yeah, just overall, very, very good matchup. Roman Reigns, hype up his chances that he is the top dog. This is his yard. He is the World Heavyweight Champion, and he's going to add to that accolade by winning another World Grand Prix. So he so creates his legacy. That's an A92. So, how will the match do? About the had sensational wrestling. And fantastic heat. It does see Fergal Devitt defeat Roman Reigns in 4029 by submission with a Fuji Arma armbar. I don't know why I've done a submission finish, but it was interference from Kofi Kingston. So Kofi proper healing up by attacking Roman, allowing Devitt to pick up the win and the World Grand Prix, granting him a championship match, whether that be against Raw's Bo Dallas or SmackDown's Roman Reigns. I think you know where we're going with that one. But in 86, he's just stole the show. He's going to be absolutely fatigued after this, so he may get the night off on Raw tomorrow. But excellent match up there. Obviously, fatigue was going to be an issue, that's understandable. And the announcer work and inconsistency as well. And to finish the show, of course, Fergal Devitt celebrates, while the crowd boos. End the show, just a B plus 89. Let's move my mic a little bit, sorry. I think it's a case of this would have easily been uh, in the 90s, in my opinion, had we not used Roman Reigns as many big matches, Andreas Almas in as many big matches, and of course Fergal Devitt, 40 minute match plus a couple of 20, so he was pretty much like an hour and a half, two hours of the show nearly. These are main event stars, so that's easily any, any show usually, but as I say, hopefully, uh, as I say, in terms of overness, it just kind of puts people over that we want over. So, Virgo and Roman and Andres Selmas will put as a three guys that get some encouragement, uh, or praised even, I should say. 
So we'll check Gibby's over on this, but as I say, it serves its point. Uh, we've got a lot of great wrestlers, there's a lot of good storylines going, a lot of people we're pushing in the future that have had a chance here. Hopefully gained a bit of good overness from it. And yeah, it just shows that Fergal Devitt is a cheat. And he is also one of the main guys. So just to confirm, uh, Nia Jax is gone, her contract has expired. Um I'm meant to say as well, NXT's gone. Uh, that is officially now done. Ibdi's just moved to Lucha Underground because of the overness that Lucha Underground has. Um, but apart from that, there's not really anyone there that I want to pick up. Or anything that directly affects us. TNA lesser time slots, so they could be struggling. Kofi will get that big pay rise. And she's in the main event as we're looking to bring in Maria as a manager and extending Cedric's contract. So Roman wants time to heal 43.55 on the network and 4,000 for testing. So a lot of people, whoa, that are unhappy for not being on that show. That's cool. Um, I always can expect that can hang it happen. We've got enough money in the bank to give people money to keep them happy, so that's cool. It always does happen. You're on these kind of shows in quick succession. Not that you make the card, so you have to kind of work around that. So if we just quickly go to titles, World Grand Prix, A Star 100, the prestige of this one just remains elite, as if it is like a main thing. Four good winners, Cena, Brian, Reigns and Devitt. Certainly reaping the benefits of just doing it as a one day thing rather than the, the 70 day tournament we've done uh, for the G1 type version at the start. So we're just going to check our main eventers uh, say, to see who got certain over this. Um, in fact, quickly jumped to upper mid card. Seeing Almas only got to 75 so it didn't really help him a lot in terms of his popularity. Uh, up by 5. What I will say though, um, if we just quickly check it, as you can see there, Mexico is still good. There's a couple of good places in England as well, so he has gained a bit of overness there. Yeah, I kind of was hoping that would have put him over a bit more. But the main event scene, so you got Adam Cole at 78s, AJ is a good level. We'll just really get through people that are in the tournament, so Alistair Black, ranging between 78 and 86, so that's, that's always good. Baron Corbin, high 80s to low 90s, very good there. Well, Dallas dropped a good bit there because of that loss to Fergal. He's down to high 80s uh, in the, the brink of the 90s. And he was obviously sitting in 93s. Chad Gable, still very solid considering his loss to Samoa Joe. Daniel Bryan, 75s, that's to be expected. He has, as I say, suffered a bit. Dean Ambrose, 88s, 89s. There you go, Fergal, 94s, 95s, 93s, 97 in Mexico. The real rock and roller is certainly over. Let's get this. So it's both sitting at 90 over now, so they've got a good good push ahead of them. Cena's in a good place, despite not being on the show. Same with KO. Both of have got him just short of 90s in some places uh, in America. We're not so over in Canada, but yeah, he's certainly got Kofi where we want him. Uh, Abushi wasn't on the show, but he's at a good level. Orton. As I say, we would expect him to be kind of upper mid card, in my opinion, 80 odd. Roman Reigns has dropped a lot. Wow. He certainly helped Kofi, but he certainly affected himself, so we need to push Roman a bit more. Sammy there, Rusev 82, Small Joe 82 as well, Seth 87s, Miz, decent level there. Velveteen Dream. Some places you get him as a 94, some places as a 92, 88, so he's, he's really, really over. Uh, when this heel turn comes, he's going to be a star. Sabre Jr., 89s as well. So what I wanted to also check, because I forget he's still on upper mid caliber, JJ. See, this is where it is. Because Raw doesn't show in America, you can see there, 75, you're thinking, how does he got that rating? And you look at him, guys over in Japan and England, 90 rating in some places. So he's certainly someone, as I say, that's got a big, big future ahead of him. As European champion as well. So that's going to be it for this episode, guys. I hope there wasn't too much static on the mic. Um, I don't know why that was. I think it's because I'm half asleep. So I just decided to speak a lot louder than usual. Um, but yeah, as I say, I enjoyed the tournament. As I say, it leads us to that point where Dev is going to be cocky going into some uh, Survivor Series. And his likely match with Bo Dallas, as I say, he could end up going to SmackDown, but I think we're just kind of going to go anyway. 
But yeah, looking forward to Survival Series, as I say, there's a couple of good matches I've got planned for it, and I say there's a few guys that have benefited for this tournament. I'm hoping as well it shouldn't be too long before we get the deal uh, deals back sorry, with the likes of um, Televista in Mexico and the US title, uh, US company broadcasting a, a raw taping as well, so we get some overness there. But money's fine, as I say, I'll sort these manila issues, that was always going to happen. But yeah, I've, I've enjoyed the show. Hope you guys did as well. Any comments you've got on the show, please just leave it in the comments section. Let me know, you know how you felt the tournament went. Are you happy with the winner? Do you feel somebody maybe should me have won that, that did win? Um, if you've ever done anything similar, if you've tried running a, a G1 type tournament yourself, let me know how you booked. You know, let me know your brackets and how you found it. And yeah, as always, as I say, likes, subscriptions, all that jazz are deeply appreciated. Um, as I say, you can follow my social medias on Twitter and Maxwell. You get me on the Twitter, you get me on Instagram as well. And yeah, as I say, there'll be a pop-up button allowing you to click subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll have the whole series previous, all the previous videos, the list of the screen shortly as well. But cheers for watching, much appreciated. Take it easy, and hopefully see you next time for the 2020 Survivor Series. Bye bye.